Okay. Hey, Raphael, how are you? Fine. And you? You're good. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks. Um, okay, let's go. So this is uh, Raphael Delum. Uh, he's based in France, where he's a data engineer at Oslandia. Uh, so he's working on really interesting sounding projects, including the topic he's talking about today, which is the use of artificial intelligence in QGIS and a QGIS uh, plugin to help users take advantage of some of the algorithms that he's working on. So um, yeah, take it away, Raphael. I'll share your screen and over to you. OK, thank you for the introduction, uh, John. So hello, everybody. Uh, like Julien, just before, I'm working at Oslandia. And uh, uh, me too, I will uh, talk about some raster steps. So it will be quite different than the pre previous pre presentation. But if you have some imagination, uh, there are some uh, bridges uh, that can be uh, built between the, the two presentations. So we will talk about uh, artificial intelligence and some attempts to introduce such stuff into QGIS. So this presentation will be focused on DeepOslandia, which is a artificial intelligence framework developed in uh, R&D project at Oslandia uh, a few years ago. And uh, the the new the new informations are the the attempts to introduce it into QGIS. So it, it won't be uh, uh, it, it, it was not so simple, and we we just have a few problems to to address. And I will talk a little bit about that uh, to finish the presentation. I will talk about some perspectives uh, to continue the the, the works. So DeepOslandia uh, is uh, is dealing with uh, semantic segmentation. So I don't know if you are okay with this uh, this term, but we are talking about artificial intelligence. We are talking about convolutional neural network. Uh, the the point is to transform the picture on the left, uh, so a classic image onto the image on the right, which is a prediction, a pixel-to-pixel -pixel prediction, which is aiming at um, deciding what's, what is on the picture. So we have some roads, we have some buildings, we have some trees, we have the sky, we have a bike track on the foreground. And the goal is to, to guess where each of these steps uh, are on the, on the picture. So I, if you're curious, sorry, sorry, I Raphael, uh, can I just interrupt you for a second? Uh, link uh, to a web demo, uh, and you can play with this demo. Uh, just sorry, to... Raphael, can I can I just get you to turn your camera off? The sound is just a little bit choppy, so if you turn your camera off, I think it'll probably help. My camera, okay. Is it okay? It's still still a little bit choppy, but maybe go ahead, and we'll see if that's a bit better. Uh, I didn't hear uh, uh, you, John. So let's uh, yeah, consider that, it's that, okay. That sounds that sounds a bit better. So yeah, go ahead. I think yeah. Thanks okay. Okay. Feeling. So let's continue. So DeepOslandia is on GitLab. Uh, it's uh, open. It's open sourced, uh, and there are four main features uh, in this software, which are the data preparation. So from input images, uh, make um, exploitable tiles. Uh, and still are types uh, so that they can be understood by the, the model. Then we have a training step. So basically, we have a, a plenty, plenty of images that are provided to a convolutional neural network model. And the point is to train it. It can uh, represent several hours of training or even days of training if uh, the model is really complex. Uh, and basically uh, means the usage of a GPU or, may, or maybe several G GPU. Then we have the, the inference step. So we have an image and we want to decide what's, what is going on on, uh, on this image. So we take the image, we take the trained model, and then we produce the, the, the output. 
Finally, there is a fourth feature which relies on the treatment of georeference data. So um, basically, DeepOslandia uh, has the, all other um, deep learning framework just produce pixel-to-pixel -pixel prediction. And the point is to, uh, to say, well, I, I want to just represent this information into a map. But to be uh, clearer uh, on this last feature, imagine you have uh, an aerial image, like on the left, with uh, building, with gardens, with roads, and so on. And you have uh, a research problem, with, which is basically uh, where are the uh, building footprints on this image and on every other image you have uh, on, your, on your disk. So the point is first to use the to say for each pixel, it's a background, yeah, or not, uh, it's not a background, it's a building pixel. So this is the job of the model, but after that, you have to answer the second question, where to, uh, where are the, this building on the map? And could we produce a raster layer or even a vector layer all this information and all the, the building coordinates. So deeper Media do that, but the, the, the dream, uh, if I can uh, say that, is we, we, we want to do the same thing into a software like QGIS. And that's the purpose of QDPlandia, which is a QGIS plugin, which relies on the DeepOslandia uh, API. Uh, it's also on GitLab, and it's a really, uh, yeah, the, um, it's like a 0 0.1 version, so it's a, um, a proof of concept, uh, which uh, I can say a few words uh, starting from now. So th there are a lot of difficulties to uh, to make uh, make it work uh, on QGIS, and the first one is the incompatibilities between QGIS and TensorFlow. So I don't know if uh, you ever tried this simple command into the QGIS Python console, but yeah, in a lot of systems it doesn't really work. So I have a small uh, a small video. I don't like the live demo like Julian just before, so I am more conservative. Uh, I tried to open a QGIS to open the Python console and just to type import TensorFlow. And as you can see, QGIS is just crying when I, uh, I'm doing so. So that's uh, the, the first problem, and that's the most important problem. Um, in the in the, the original target. So a few years ago, I am now on Ubuntu 20.4. Uh, a few years ago, it seemed to work on Ubuntu 18.4, and overall with TensorFlow in version one. And now TensorFlow is on version two, and it changed a lot of things. So two years ago, uh, I did a little benchmark, a little feed, uh, I catch some feedbacks in the QGIS issue tracker, and it was uh, supposed to be only a Python dependency tree problem. So you have to check some dependency like NumPy, like H55, uh, because QGIS on the first end and TensorFlow on the other end uh, both use the, these dependencies. So you have to uh, take care of the version of these dependencies to make TensorFlow work uh, into QGIS. But now with TensorFlow 2, there are other problems. So they, it seems to be more uh, tricky problems because we can see this uh, exception. So it talks about protocol buffer. Uh, it, uh, it talks about uh, compiling stuffs. You can see at the end that uh, we have a message about the compilation of TensorFlow, which is done with Bazel. Uh, so it's yeah, more more hard, more harder. Uh, I tried to uh, recompile protocol buffer. I tried to recompile, recompile TensorFlow, which is uh, quite a longer process than QGIS, I have to say. Uh, 
yeah, still the same problem. But yeah, actually, I'm not really uh, good at compiling stuff. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I I give up this this process. Uh, it was uh, I was forced to give up it because I just want to make it work. And in my opinion, it was supposed to be for simple. So if you are uh, good at compiling stuff, uh, I, I can wait for you uh, in the project. Uh, but yeah, let's focus on the uh, short-term uh, objective. I, I just want to work because it's a proof of concept, and I just want to have some demonstration uh, 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 aspects. So I use the, the creepy way, the ugly creepy way, which is Talam OS.system. So Deepostlandia comes with a common line inter interface. So I, I can't do this into the, the source code of the, the plugin. But yeah, it's, it's not really satisfying for now. But let's say a good objective could be to overcome this, this aspect in the, in the future. So with this uh, workaround, uh, we can demonstrate some, some features. I will focus on two separate features, which are the generation of uh, an exploitable data sets. So it's, uh, it's related to the first feature of uh, Deepostlandia. And the second feature is, uh, it is uh, sorry, the inference of a raster image uh, to produce a vector layer. So it's a combination between the infer inference feature and the post-processing feature of Deepostlandia. Uh, I will show you some, some results so gathered with the Tanzania dataset. Uh, so this dataset was released during the last first 4G conference uh, in Tanzania. And the point was to detect, uh, to detect building footprints. And the, the building could completed, they, uh, they could be unfinished, or they could be uh, foundations. So there are 30 images, uh, but that's not really the point. We we'll just focus on, on, a, on a small sample. Um, so to illustrate uh, both features of uh, QDPlandia, uh, I will show you how it works. So it uh, mainly QGIS processing. There is a processing for data generation and the processing for inference. Uh, on this uh, video, you can see a small clipped image, which is uh, a specific Rust layer of the QGIS project. And starting from this layer, we can uh, produce some tiles on the, on the file tree. And these tiles will be exploited uh, by the, the inference uh, step. So I won't show you any training uh, training process because as you can imagine, uh, that's not necessarily the point. Uh, it's not necessarily a good idea to train a deep learning model on a QGIS instance. Uh, so let's continue directly to the, the inference uh, processing. So we still have our clipped image. Uh, we can try to in to the inference. Uh, there is a small progress terminal which uh, illustrates the fact that the, 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 the inference process is, uh, is going on. Uh, in terms of uh, inferring time uh, on my computer that was around uh, uh, half, half a second per image, per tile. Uh, and on this small example, there was six tiles, there were six tiles. So let's, uh, yeah, this is a three seconds for producing the output layer in, in yellow. Uh, so with this, uh, this building. With a little uh, bigger example, uh, so this bigger clipped image is around 38 hectares. Uh, it represents 288 uh, tiles. And we can see that the, the model uh, produced uh, some, some uh, green building. So that's finished building. There is a small unfinished building on the, at the bottom. 
but no example of foundation there. So the the output looks like close to the OpenStreetMap uh, raster, which is quite satisfying. But yeah. Um, some words about the perspectives uh, of this work, uh, and that's maybe the, the most interesting uh, aspect of the presentation. Uh, the, the, we have to take some, some yeah, to sh shed a, another light to, to, to the project. Um, for me, and I hope uh, it's the same for, for you, uh, it's a fascinating topic, uh, bridging the gap between artificial intelligence and Q, uh, QGIS, and in GIS in general, that, that's pretty cool. But that's also really challenging. So in terms of packaging, of course, but also in terms of artificial intelligence uh, theory and, uh, and practices. Uh, I'm more and more convinced that Geodata is really good at bridging the gap between both uh, topics, especially when you consider semantic segmentation problems and especially when you deal with aerial or satellite images. So it's still a good topic, uh, but there are clear limits to, to address and to overcome, uh, especially when you are on a 100% local architecture. So it's the mess in terms of packaging. Uh, maybe uh, there are other solutions to do better uh maybe docker uh, maybe designing a, a good docker maybe considering cloud uh, solutions uh anyway apart from the packaging uh, it's clear that you won't train your model on your small laptop especially if you have no gpu at all so uh, it's more like you have a QGIS, you get a train model uh, in, uh, I, I don't know how, but you have the, the, the chance to have such a model or to train uh, such a model in another uh, computer. And uh, yeah, it can be good, but the, the training step uh, still have to, to, be, to be solved. And to, to generalize, um, this is, as I said several times, it's still a um, um, proof of concept. Uh, there are some new features to add. Uh, so we have to clarify the, the scopes of Deepostlandia and the scope of QDeepostlandia with respect to Deepostlandia. Uh, there are some uh, improvements that can be done in terms of uh, considering um, georeference data. And uh, of course, the, the biggest part, uh, it's really the improving the, the quality of the solution and improving the, the packaging. Uh, it's still an unresolved, uh, an unresolved uh, issue. So, I guess it's more work, and we have to still to have more ideas to, to what can be done uh, in this situation. So it's kind of a, a dream of a, the dream of an engineer, maybe to to do such steps into into Q, uh, QGIS uh, to do uh, artificial intelligence in this context, but. Maybe we have to consider uh, what was the what is uh, a good scenario of usage uh, of such a tool. Will the user um, train them, their model uh, in such a way? Yeah, I guess not. But will they uh, use such tools for infer? Uh, maybe. Will they need to to exploit some uh, cloud solutions? Will they do everything on their own computer? Yeah, they are, this is still an open, an open question. So maybe just pick uh, on the technical state, state of the art could be, uh, could be uh, uh, a, good, uh, a good way to, to, to begin to process. So that's all for me. Uh, I have no slide of uh, question uh, and so on, but I will still be pleased to, to answer a question if there are. 
Okay. Thanks, Raphael. That is really cool. That's like, uh, it, it feels like uh, really cutting edge stuff you're working on there. So thanks for thanks for sharing that. Um, we have a couple questions from the audience here. So one person's asking um, if it would make sense to put Deposlandia in Orfeo Toolbox or some other image processing application. Um, actually, I'm not really sure about the fact that Deposlandia um, is an addition uh, of Orfeo Toolbox. Maybe the scope of Orfeo still cover uh, is still covering uh, the Deposlandia one. So maybe it could be uh, the, the, the la my last point was to just check if they are complement. Uh, they can be complementary. Yeah. Complementary. Yeah. Okay. Um, another person is asking if integration of random forest would be possible. Yeah, it's far uh, far simpler in uh, uh, in my opinion, because to do random forest, you don't need GPU, uh, you don't need TensorFlow, <laughs> so that's two big problems that disappear, uh, and I think it could be straightforward. You, if you want to take advantage of the state of the art, state of the art open source libraries. You will uh, consider um, uh, Scikit-learn, for for instance, and uh, my my uh, yeah, I, I guess it will be far simpler to to use that. But I never try, so I, I'm not sure. But I I think it's good. Okay. Um, somebody else has asked. So the biggest challenge of creating a QGIS plugin that can perform machine learning operations for identifying constructions and others would be the lack of integration with some libraries like TensorFlow. So there, there's a lack of integration with ten, libraries like TensorFlow, I guess. Yeah, if, uh, yeah, if I want to, to be, um, yeah, if I want to, um, to say a, a big world, uh, a big world, sorry, uh, I would say, the, the, the integration of TensorFlow is a problem uh, just without QGIS. <laughs> so right. it's a really big, big uh, software. Uh, it's hard to compile, uh, and its integration in uh, in in itself is a, uh, comes with a, a lot of problems. So uh, yeah, it's a problem. Maybe doing the same with uh, alternative uh, libraries could be a solution. Maybe tr trying to import PyTorch could uh, generate less problem. I don't know. But uh, yeah, th the point is when I was blocked because of uh, protocol buffer problems, uh, I said to me, yeah, there it's really, really hard to, to do better. And I, I just don't know if the TensorFlow track is a good one uh, because of this uh, this obstacle. Right. Okay. Um, and yeah, just to just maybe wrap up with I, I've a, I have general more general question. Like, so this feels like some really cutting edge uh, um, early days stuff that you're working on. But um, you know, if you can maybe look into the future a little bit, what what does it look like for an ordinary QGIS user to be like, what, what, what is somebody in five years' time, what is an ordinary QGIS user going to be doing with this kind of work, do you think? Yeah, you have, a, in terms of uh, application, uh, if it's your question, uh, yeah. you, in the example I showed uh, just before, you have the example of um, um, trying to, uh, looking for the building footprints, but you can do the same thing for for uh, crops, uh, cultures. Uh, you can uh, try to decide where are the, uh, yeah, I, I am thinking right now uh, to a, a, funny, uh, a funny example. Uh, in France, uh, there is an application, uh, I guess it's the, uh, for, for collecting taxes. Uh, the, the question is, where are the swimming pools? And uh, right. <laughs> do the swimming pool are declared by the owner of swimming pools? And recognizing the, with aerial images, 
But where the swimming pools are could be of interest for such users. Um, and for a, a QGIS user, uh, I guess the solution is not to to improve pain with a deep learning model and training stuff. And yeah, I, I guess the point is we have to uh, provide uh, the, the way to train a model uh, without any pain. Uh, so maybe through the cloud, maybe. Uh, we have to uh, provide a solution to just uh, do inference uh, in an easy way. So that was the purpose of the, the QGIS plugin. Uh, and at this point, uh, it it could be could be okay, I think. Very cool. Okay, well, let's let's leave it there. So thank you very much, Rafael. That was a really interesting presentation, and um, yeah, that that wraps up this session. So yeah, thanks again. Okay, thank you for listening to the presentation, and thank you, John, for sharing. Okay, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks, Rafael. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, so that wraps up the session. Um, I think the next the uh, the next thing is a plenary session in the Milena Liban room, a keynote session with Nisera Wanjiru Kimani talking about data colonialism in communities, uh, starting on the hour. So um, enjoy that, and yeah, thanks for joining the QGIS session, everybody. Thanks a lot. Cheers. <laughs>